Hey, uh, this is Jonathan. Um, so, I'm recording this video, and I'm probably going to be recording a bunch of videos, uh, mostly because I just kind of want to uh, log my progress as I work on uh, my uh, mini rando project, so my own little tiny little ran randomizer game. And, uh, yeah, just, it, it's not, this isn't really meant to be, like, for a, any other purpose other than just logging stuff. And I know I could just, like, write up stuff, but I, I, I didn't really have any material for my blog for this month. So I decided, why don't we try doing something that has a more, you know, measurable uh, state of progress. And do some recordings on uh, my of the the progress I've made on this project uh, as I'm coding it. So yeah, I, I've never really done like live coding before or anything, so this is sort of new to me. Uh, I don't really know how this is going to pan out, but I guess uh, we'll see how it all goes. So essentially, I've been pretty busy with real life stuff and other obligations, so I haven't had much of a chance to actually touch this project in about a month. So essentially there isn't a lot uh, happening here that I actually really uh, remember writing. I, I vaguely remember doing stuff with these uh, bit flags, but yeah, I, I left a bunch of comments here because I, I knew that I was not going to remember anything that I was doing. And I'd come back here and just be like, huh, what, 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 what was happening? I believe my first goal with all of this was actually to start um, from the algorithm, the actual main randomization algorithm. And then once, once I have that built, uh, I would build the rest of the game. Uh, if you couldn't tell, uh, this is I, I'm trying to build this game using Amethyst. Oh, I thought I installed this plugin. Oh well. Anyway, I'm, I'm trying to build this using Amethyst. Obviously, it's not uh, it's not a 1.0 release yet. A lot of crates and rest are not 1.0 releases, but it seems like a pretty promising uh, game engine to use. So, and I, and I and I quite like uh, what I've seen from it so far. So yeah, essentially that's. That, that's kind of the direction that this project is going to go in, ultimately. So, for now, let's try and implement uh, the randomization algorithm. So, uh, for background, this is going to be an item randomizer at first. Uh, I might add other kinds of randomization, like entrance randomization, etc. I'm, I'm essentially going for something similar to uh, the Link to the Past randomizer, because that's pretty much one of the most popular randomizers. I think it has a nice formula for success, but yeah, just having like an actual randomizer game. I, I've explained it on my blog, so if you, if you, if anyone's actually watching this at all, um, they can go read my blog and understand where I'm going with all this. So, one thing that I have here is the actual randomization algorithm, and. Or, or at least a document about the randomization algorithm. And it works a bit differently from what I originally anticipated. So when I was uh, thinking of writing my own randomizer game, my first thought was I'd just do something kind of naive, like, uh, you know, you'd have like the set of locations that uh, you're able to access at first, and like the player's inventory is empty. Like that's the that's the initial game state, and you know maybe I can like illustrate this better. Maybe if I like open up like Paint Program or something. Yeah. So what I was thinking was we'd have I don't know. Here's like the player inventory. And there'd be a bunch of items. So we have like our our map. I'm kind of basing it off of like the uh, cross product tracker. Um, you have like locations on it all over the place. This is uh, they're they're not weird rectangular shapes like this normally, but I I'm I'm just saying like these are just locations on some world map of the game. 
And usually you'll see them uh, colored like red for stuff that's not accessible and uh, green for things that are accessible. Oh, why is this one red? <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, and like yellow for things that are visible, but you haven't checked them yet, so you don't know what the item is. So it's not necessarily uh, accessible uh, immediately, usually, but you can like check the item. Actually, I actually don't know the actual color coding for everything, but it, it's roughly like this. And so, what I was thinking was, you do something similar to this, except obviously you, you wouldn't really care about like the yellow case. Like, you'd care about which items are accessible and which ones are not accessible. And every time you uh, decide to put an item in a location, like if you put the hookshot here in, in this uh, square in the middle here, uh, you could add like the hookshot to your player inventory. Ooh, that's not a good color. And if you did that, then you would expand um, the regions on here. Like you, let's say the hookshot unlocked uh, this location here. So now uh, this location is no longer accessible. So I don't know, maybe we mark it as like a black square. Like that one's been taken. And now uh, this has been added to like our pool of selectable locations. So I was thinking like doing of taking this naive approach where you just kind of fill in items like this, and slowly you build up an inventory. Let's say like you get like the fire rod next. And that was placed uh, in this new location that we just uh, made accessible. And maybe the fire rod opens up uh, like this location over here. So essentially, that's kind of the idea I was going for. Um, but after reading a, about how um, the link to the past randomizer works, uh, it seems that they they do something uh, very different. And I kind of like their approach a bit better. So they use these two fillers. They have like a fast filler, and then they have like an assumed filler. And uh, essentially what's happening here is, uh, let's see. So they have like a list of assumed items. So maybe we'll have like another circle down here. Or, no, they have, like, assumed accessible locations. Or, I, I think that's how it works. Let me read that again. Oh, yeah, I, I assumed accessible items. Yeah, so they have a bunch of items that they assume are accessible. So that would be pretty much everything to begin with. And what they do is they shuffle the locations around and then place an item uh, from here into one of those locations at random. Remove uh, that location from... Well, actually, first you have to remove that, uh, that item from Exhumed Accessible. Uh, because you, you want to make sure that the, the, the location can't actually... Uh, the location is actually accessible when the item is there. Like, you can't put the hookshot in the hookshot locked location, obviously. And as far as I know, they just re kind of repeat that process. Yeah, so we can read the, about the algorithm here. List of locations the item can be placed in is established using the following two criteria. Is there already an item in that location? If so, filter it out. Can the item be placed there given the list of assumed accessible items? If not, filter it out. Yeah, so essentially they assume that you have everything, and then they put the item in the location, uh, assuming that that item has is not accessible. And they essentially just uh, continue looping like that. So I guess it, it, it's, it's more accurate if everything is, I guess, green to begin with. And then, instead of having items in an inventory, you'd have just like basically everything here. 
and then you, you maybe you like remove hookshot. Wow, I, I hate colors. <laughs> I hate all color. What's the work in the Microsoft Paint here? Yeah, so maybe we remove the hookshot from assume accessible, and so now the hookshot will be or any uh, hookshot lock locations will be crossed out. So, uh, I don't know, like if this is an, a hookshot location, then maybe that's gone, maybe this one's gone. But now we have a list of locations that we should be able to access, assuming we have everything else in the game. So the next, if we uh, get like the hammer, Oh, yeah. See, I keep making that mistake. Next we get the hammer. And then we'll, like, remove the hammer locked location. So maybe that one, and that one, and that one. So you obviously want to remove the hammer locked locations first before uh, putting the item, so maybe these two are the hammer lock locations, and this is where the actual hammer goes. But yeah, it, essentially that's how they uh, that's how they um, I guess populate the world. So yeah, I I kind of like the second approach better because it, it I feel like it would have a more even distribution of items. Because say if you did the naive approach that I was talking about earlier. You'd have items in like a small set of locations, or like you like for sure guaranteed. Um, you'd if you picked an item that didn't unlock very many locations, this original set of locations won't expand by very much, right? If if the well, the first item you put down was like say the hammer though, and it unlocked like a whole bunch of locations, then yeah, then the, then the pool would actually increase quite a bit, but if the randomizer happens to pick a lot of items that don't um, necessarily unlock very much to begin with, then you're going to run into issues where the world um, ends up having all the items clustered early on in the game in e more easily accessible locations, rather than having um, those oh, the longer logic chains that people are kind of used to when they play randomizers. So, yeah, that that's kind of a, I guess, probab probability thing that you have to kind of take into account when you're designing a uh, randomizer algorithm. At least, in theory, I think that's how it would work. I'm, I'm not 100% sure, because I obviously haven't tested it or anything yet. But that, that, that seems generally um, what they're going for with the existing logic. So, yeah... Uh, so that's the that's the basic idea of what I think I want to do. So I don't really have like a great plan, honestly. I don't really plan things out when I uh, work on personal projects like this. I just kind of like to you know just hash out some code just for fun and don't think about it too hard. Obviously, that can come back to bite me in the future, but you know that's just kind of part of it. If it does, then you know it's it's it. It'll be more fun, maybe, possibly. <laughs> I I actually have no idea. Uh, so yeah, let's read through these comments that I put down a while back. Maybe merge these two into one entity. Right. So, uh, Amethyst uses ECS. So, I mean, if you don't know what ECS is, go look it up. Um, ECS is an entity component system. And so I wanted to, I think I was trying to, I don't know what I was trying to do. <laughs> it's been so long. Item set, item location set, what is this? I, why don't I label things better? I'm, I'm terrible. Filled item location entities should contain name as string. Okay. Item location as item location set. Yeah, okay, I vaguely remember I was uh, trying to use bit sets to represent um, 
items uh, in locations. Don't remember how that worked. I should have documented that. I, I, I don't think I was prepared to be away from this project for so long and to come back and know absolutely nothing about what I was doing. Oh no! I, I remember now. The item set is like an inventory, so... Yeah, like a, an, an empty item set would be an inventory with nothing in it. An item set with this first item, item 1, would be 0x01. Zero zero uh, a second item with this... Uh, yeah, essentially it's just a bit set. Oh, hello. Um, hi, I don't know why it decided to do that. Essentially... I'm just doing a bit shift operations on each of these, so if you want to add a new item, it would fill in the uh, third bit. No wait, this first bit, second bit, third bit. Yeah, okay. So, so this would, this fourth item would fill in like a fourth bit. You can easily illustrate that in like paint. So if I have an empty inventory, it looks like this. If I have the first item, I ha it looks like this. If I have both the first and second item, I have this. If I only have the second item, it looks like this. You know, a uh, very basic uh, bit set. It's what they use in a lot of uh, games, like Kirby and the Amazing Mirror, for example, does this to uh, track which chests you have or have not opened, and which items you do or do not have. It's a pretty simple uh, concept. I don't remember what the item location set is. So these are locations. Um, I guess these are locations that are either filled or that either have an item or do not have an item. Yeah, that that seems right. I'm pretty sure that's what this is. Okay, so yeah, I was talking about entities here. Maybe merge these two into one entity. Item location entities should contain the item location as an item location set. Okay. So... Right, every item will be an instance of an item location set. That's what... Uh, because uh, the way that this library works is you it, it tries to like strongly type everything so you would union like item location sets and if you had like a single item it would be uh, just one of these entries in the set I could have just used an enum honestly but I don't know like how, how an enum would compare to like this bit flags thing so I'm, I'm just going with the bit flags because they make sense to me. Okay, and then there will be prerequisites. For some reason I thought I just have like a function that takes an item set and produces a bool. So I guess it's a function that says, hey, uh, if you have these items in your inventory, uh, then uh, return uh, return true if that item is or if that location is accessible uh, given that item set. Okay. Yeah, I I vaguely remember what I was doing. Yeah, so instead of having like structs, I'd be using uh, entities, I think, to store this information. Uh, field item location entities should contain the name of the location. Okay, yeah, I can kind of understand that. See, I, I, I don't know why I was planning all this stuff out. I don't really know um, how much of this information is useful. The item location as item location set, yeah, and the item at that location as an item set. Uh... Yeah, I, I, I guess that kind of makes sense. Um, uh, <laughs> sort of. 
See, I just don't remember what I was doing, so maybe I'll just ignore this. So, I did define a function contains item at one point, apparently. So it takes like an inventory. Takes an item. And then we do a bitwise and of the inventory with the item. Oh, okay, and then that's how you check if the inventory contains an item. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. I can get behind that. That makes sense. Yeah. So, how are we going to start this thing? Um, I, I kind of wanted to use what they were going with, right? So, instead of doing the item set like this, I might have to change things. Right, so we need, we need a set of uh, assumed accessible items. They, they 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 use the term list all the time, but I'm I I assume it doesn't really matter if it's ordered or not. So you need a set of assumed accessible items. Okay. No, I haven't really planned on what items I want in this game, but I'll I'll I'll, I'll figure it out later. I'll just use like dummy placeholder items for now. So how am I going to represent my assumed accessible items? Uh, well, you want to say that everything is accessible, right? To begin with. So our assumed accessible items could just be an item set. Yeah, so instead of doing like this inventory thing, we could just do the assumed accessible. I, I, I like that idea. Assumed accessible is this item set can I do like an item set uh, full? I don't know how that's going to work unless I can do like an empty and then like invert it I'm not actually sure actually does this thing even recognize? I don't know what this thing is doing I don't know if this autocomplete is... Yeah, this autocomplete doesn't seem right. I don't know. I mean, it is still an alpha thing, so... Yeah, okay. I guess it doesn't recognize it. It just doesn't know how to autocomplete that properly. Um... How do you... Uh, is there, like, a not operator? <laughs> I can use to just like flip all the bits at once. Or should I maybe... Or maybe I can invert this. Uh... Okay, yeah, we can do like items inaccessible. Yeah, okay, so none of the items are inaccessible. So this is kind of like our assumed uh, accessible items equivalent. Sure, indent with four spaces, I don't really care. Okay. So, we have an empty set, and now what we want to do is every time we pick an item, like any valid item, at random, we want to add that item to the list of items that are inaccessible. And I guess we want to just look at our locations and filter out any locations that are not accessible at that point. Right? Yeah. And then we'll add the item to 
our uh, then we'll yeah I guess then we'll set a location to have an item one of the accessible locations and then I think we remove all those locations or we essentially we mark all those locations as not being accessible anymore I want to say that makes sense. So I guess what we could do is flag locations as being inaccessible. I think that makes sense, right? Yeah, I mean, we can just have this be a, f like, uh, yeah, we can use this to represent inaccessible locations. I mean, it's just a bunch of bit flags. It shouldn't really make a difference. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with this function, now that I, ha I I mean, I wrote it. I guess I can keep it around for a reference for when I decide to do something with it, but yeah, I, honestly, I'm not too attached to that. Just done everything with four spaces, please. I really don't care. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. So, I guess we should start from here. Um, right. Uh, so randomly pick an item. How am I going to do that? So if I want to randomly pick an item, I need to use the rand crate. It's been a while since I've used the rand crate. I don't really remember how you use it. Yeah, I, I want it to be... Oh, you know... Hmm... Yeah, actually, I'm not really sure how this is going to work. Because uh, I, I need to be within like a certain range, too. Yeah. How is this going to work? Maybe I should have just gone with lists and enums and stuff. I mean, I mean that would have been easier to implement, obviously. But I'd have to do less uh, mental gymnastics. Yeah, I'm gonna go look it up. Let's go search. Rand crate. Uh, rust. There we go. I have looked at this before, but I don't really remember how to actually use it. Uh, okay, so we could use shuffle to shuffle around elements in a slice. I think that's what they were doing, essentially. They like had their locations in like a slice, and then they shuffled them. I'm not going to do that. I think what I'm going to do, since I'm using bit flags, is I'm going to randomly generate like a number, and then shift left by that number. Seems about right. Seems I think that's what I would probably want to do. Yeah, I mean, it really doesn't make a huge difference, I think. So, how do I use the seedable RNG? Are there any examples? Uh, oh yeah, I need to have like a, like some kind of like slice or something, I remember, to create an RNG, like a seedable RNG. So they have from seed, yeah. Create a new PRNG using the given seed. And seed is a something that implements seed. How does that work? Okay, so we, we definitely probably want to use this. Yeah, and then I think there was like a gen range method. That's how you did this. Thread RNG dot gen. So there might be like a thread RNG gen range. And then you can specify like from zero to whatever. Obviously that's not gonna work because if I always generate within a range and then like I pick something out of that range, um, 
then if I try to regenerate the numbers, I'm going to end up with problems, won't I? Yeah. Because I'd have to, like, eliminate that from my range. That's kind of annoying, actually. I don't really like this approach. <laughs> I'm not really sure I like uh, bit flags in this context. I'm not really sure that's gonna work because, yeah, like I like I said, there's if I generate within some range, and then I take out a number in the middle of that range, then I have to somehow like split my range, right? And then I have to like stitch those ranges together and. That's not really good. Because if I put, took out, like, if I had, like, 20 items, I took out items, I don't know, 10 and 15, and maybe 5, like, then we have, like, elements from 0 to 4, and then elements from 6 to 9, 11 to 14, and then 16 to 20. Like, we, we would have to keep uh, subdividing our range, and I don't really know a good way of representing that, other than, you know, like, a list. So, maybe that's not the best way to go. I mean... Yeah, I'm not really super happy with that. Because while it could work in theory, it's probably going to be just... Uh, it's, it's probably going to end up being very messy. I'm trying to think if there's like a way around this, but... Well, I don't have to necessarily use like the number as like the amount that I have to shift. That is true. I don't necessarily have to use the number as the amount I have to shift. I can use the number as like an index into almost like a list. But I'd, all, I'd have to remember to skip over items that I've already encountered. I guess that's okay. I can do that, right? Like, I have like a contains function already. I could just check. Uh, if it already contains that number, I, uh, then I can skip it when I'm iterating through. Except I'm not going to be iterating over anything. I don't. I don't because I won't, wouldn't have a list. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we can. We, let, let's try some stuff first before we completely write off this solution. Because obviously, I haven't really given it much thought. So what was it? From seed. So I think seeds are slices, if I remember correctly. Like I could just give it an array slice, like this. Give it, I don't know, something like that, and that would be a, a valid seed. I think it's okay with that. Oh yeah, no, no. Um, this might need to be immutable. I, need, I might need to do this. I thought there was like, I thought like autocomplete. Maybe it doesn't, unless. Yeah, I don't know. IntelliJ Rust, still kind of new. Let's see. Maybe RNG Core is what I care about. Because I was expecting that. Everything would implement RNG core. Maybe they do, but they don't seem to have what I want there. Let's go back. Oh, no, not that far back. Wasn't there like a gen range? Yeah, there is right here. RNG dot gen range. Should be able to just do that, right? I don't know. We're 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 just testing stuff right now.
Let's see, what does this do? Oh, aborting because of two previous errors. Type must be known at this point. Consider giving us a type. Oh, okay, sure. Uh, oops. Probably need to do this. There. Rang. Okay, what's the other error? Is there any others? Type annotation needed. It says two. Where's the other error? Error. Cannot find value inventory. Oh, right, because I deleted that. I can comment this out. Really? Missing associated type seed value. <sighs> what if I just give it RNG? Like, if, what if we just go really general with that? Cannot be made into an object. What? <laughs> I should read the documentation before I try doing things. Wow. Uh, dying traits. Have those been stabilized? Yeah, wow. Uh, it's been a while. It has been a while. What do they use? They use. They just use third RNG. But I want my RNG to be seedable. Like, for sure. Because if, if I can't seed the RNG, that's not good. Then how, how are we going to have people r run the same races, right? Like, it's just, it, it just doesn't make sense. Okay, okay. Yeah, so the RNG seed is just like a... It's just one of these. It's just like a slice. So this is just for RNG's large seeds. Is there something that already has seedable RNG? Can I look at the GitHub page maybe? Maybe it has an example there. This is that same example, I think. I know I've done this before! <laughs> I've definitely done this before. I didn't have to go through... I didn't have to like jump through a lot of hoops to do it. Like I, I very specifically remember that. Yeah, it's been too long. Also, this is getting annoying. Let's just, uh, oh, I want to, should I keep my uses above my mods? I thought that was, uh, I thought that was more idiomatic, but I'm not sure. If you couldn't tell, I'm not really that familiar with Thrust. Like, I've, I've used it for a while, but I'm not, like, super familiar with it. To a point where I know the ins and outs and all the other quirks. Although, you'd think I should know um, the ordering of my use and mods and whatever. I already forgot what I was trying to do. Was it this? I think so. Yeah, I was gonna do. I, I don't like doing star imports because it's nice to be able to see like exactly uh, where everything is coming from. So we'll just do this. Okay, now it's pretty okay with now it's now it's recognizing things i don't know yeah i don't know about this though oh i guess i was trying to do the randomization here i don't think that's a good idea why would i do that
Unless I made like a choose random item method, maybe. I could kind of see that. Rand RNG cannot be made into an object. Uh, I don't remember how this works though. Because this one just uses type inference. Like, they're, they're okay with just doing that. Oh! What if... What if I did this? What if I did, what if I did like, RNG from seed? <sighs> nope. Because it needs an associated type for the seed value. I mean, I guess I could provide one? Let me see. Seedable RNG rand crate rust. Uh, I feel like none of these are going to be that useful, but like, I don't know, I can, I guess, look at this. Yeah, so, uh, this implements this, so that really makes even less sense, what I'm doing. Or was I using standard RNG? I think I was using standard RNG. That's... That's probably what I was doing. Yeah, because this one uses a... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I want to say that's what I should be using. Well, that, that really seems like the right thing to do. No, it doesn't like that. Expected U832. Oh. Oh, okay. Right then. Um, how does this work again? Is there like a. I think you can do that. 8 bits, right? So this should be okay. That's an integer. Why is it an integer? Uh, what's the syntax for denoting something as an uh, unsigned 8 bit integer again? I can't really remember. Was it like. I think it was like that. Yeah, I, I want to say you can do that. Okay, but I'm giving it a slice. Maybe it doesn't like a slice. Yeah, it just wants, like, an array. Okay. Sure. Let's see if that's any better. Nope, it is not. Two RNG can be made into an object. Well, what if I get rid of this? What about that, huh? Hmm? 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 This is definitely not the way that you should uh, solve your problems, but that's the way I decided to do it, so... Hooray! It, it works! So for this uh, seed, this, this seed is basically just um, zero, and uh, this is an array of 32 zeros. For this seed, it's always going to generate four, and we can test that by running it again, and again, and again, and again. So. Okay, we're good now. The only reason I tried to like hack it that way is because I've done this before. Like I've, I, I know I've definitely created uh, RNGs like this in Rust using the Rand crate. I just didn't really remember how I had done it in the past. So yeah, I, I just thought it'd be faster to just kind of like hack away at it by guessing. Don't try this at home.
Okay, so what do we do next? Uh, so now we, we're able to print numbers. That's cool. I was gonna try and do gen range from like zero to the number of items left. I think that would work. I honestly feel like it's probably better if I just use like a list <laughs> at this point because I'm trying to figure out like to when to skip numbers and stuff is probably not going to be very easy. I imagine. I mean, it, well... Hmm. Let's, let, let's roll with this for now. Like I said, let's, let, let, let's, let's not roll it out too quickly. So I guess uh, we we need us we we have our set of inaccessible items here. And then we need to have our set of actually accessible items. Or well, our actual pool of items. I don't feel like this makes much sense. To be honest, I don't think this makes sense. Maybe I should just have it just be items accessible. And then... Yeah, why don't we... Can, can you, like, do, like, a bitwise knot? How does... How does bit flags work? That's, that's what I need to know. How does bit flags work? Uh... You, how do you work? Can I can I test somehow? I actually don't know. Let's just look up bit flags. That'll that'll be faster. This is documentation, so it should be fine, honestly. Uh, let's just look at this first, I guess. Alright, I got that. Let's go look at this. Yeah, like I could just I could just like union all the different items. But I don't wanna. <laughs> I wanna be lazy. I just wanna Can I just set them all? Well they have a check for is all, but that's not a check for... Oh, no, 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 here we go. The set of all flags. Oh, okay. Yeah, there we go. There's an all. Cool. All I have to do is look it up. So we now have uh, the assumed items accessible. And anytime we want to pick from the accessible items list, all I have to do is just uh, generate a number uh, from zero to the number of items accessible. Uh, how am I going to do that, though? I did not think about that. Uh, well, I could just use like the number of bits. Is there a way I can like get the number of bits? I could, like, iterate through and have, like, a counter, I guess. It's one way of doing things. Yeah, I could do that. Oh, you can, like, insert and remove flags? I wonder how that works. Okay, yeah, you can do a, a knot as well. You absolutely have to. That was kind of silly. I'm... Yeah, how am I going to do that? 
Should have thought about that beforehand. Uh, I guess what I could do is exactly what I said. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll iterate through. We'll, we'll just have like a counter and. Yeah, okay. Count items. So we'll take an item set. I guess, I don't know, uh, U32, see how that goes? What, what, okay, that's just a bit slow there. Uh, how am I going to do this? So what I'm thinking is we have like a check. And it says if it is greater than zero, yeah, if our item set is greater than zero, or at least its numerical representation is greater than zero, then we still have um, an item, I guess. Yeah, essentially we're, what we're trying to do is we're trying to drain all the items out of this thing by bit shifting to the right. So if we keep doing bit shifts, and we drain the entire thing, and then it becomes zero. And we have a counter for every bit shift operation that we perform. Then we can count uh, how many items we have. I'm going to do a naive for loop approach for now. I don't really uh, like for loops, typically, because, you know, it's not very... Uh, it's a very imperative way of doing things, but whatever. <laughs> I'm, just gonna, I'm just trying to count stuff right now. Yeah, and this isn't really a collection, so... Let's do this. Uh, let mute counter equals zero. For... Uh, how am I going to know how many times I want to iterate, though? I can't really do that. I can't do a for loop. For loop doesn't work. It would have to be like a while loop then. Yeah, I think it would have to be a while loop if I was going to do it that way. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. Can you uh, can you generate an infinite range? I'm kind of curious if you can have like infinite ranges. Oh, you can have it go to not a number. Okay. Interesting. They don't really say anything about infinite ranges. Explicit iterators. Oh boy. I don't know, it looked like uh, the non-number thing was pretty promising, but yeah, I don't know. I was thinking if we could use like a lazy stream, then we wouldn't have to use like a while loop. I don't really care. Yeah, so iterators are lazy. Nothing happens until you call next. 
Yeah, so can I not have, like, an infinite... Oh, yeah, here we go. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. This is exactly what I was hoping for. Cool. I don't need to do the counter. Let me just do this. So now we can just do, like, numbers dot... what? Fold left, I think. <laughs> I don't remember the method names. Uh, what's the method name for this? Because I know it's fold L in some languages. Fold left rust. Is it called fold left? Fold left? Nope. Scan fold. Do they not have a fold left, fold right? Is it just fold? I think it might just be fold. Okay, well if it's just fold, then I'm just gonna go with fold. Fold, and it takes... Right, the accumulators first. Okay. Here's first, and here's the number. I guess we can return the accumulator. Plus one. Uh, yeah. I th think this is what I want to do. Wait, no, I know, I, I can't, wait, I can't do a, I can't fold over an infinite range of numbers? That doesn't make sense. No, 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 what are you doing? I don't want to use fold. Fold is not the right thing. I want to use, I think, take while. Yield elements based on a predicate. Yeah, I want to use take while. Alright, so we'll take while on this thing. At least I think that's what I want. No, I don't want to count. I do think I want to use take while. It seems right. It seems like the right thing to do. Okay, never mind. Take while. Predicate is going to be. I don't know. Uh, does the predicate look like in take while? Just a closure, okay. It just takes one argument. Uh, hmm. I guess it doesn't really matter what that argument is, does it? No. Because the only thing that matters is if items bit shifted to the right once. Yeah. Is there a way to do bit shifting on... Uh... Great. I, I got rid of it, didn't I? Yeah, I did. Whatever. Bit flags rest. Is there a way to do a bit shift? Flags not clear, flags not it's empty, flags high. I don't know if I can bit shift. I guess I could go dot bits. Yeah, I could I could dot bits. What does bits do? The raw value of the flags currently stored. Yeah, okay, we'll just do dot bits. I am dot bits. Is that a method? 
think so, right? I always get confused because I'm in C sharp, which is what I um, typically use. Um, in C sharp, they have like properties, and they don't have like this thing. Uh, so shift once. Okay, so if this shifted over is uh, how am I gonna? Do that? Uh, how am I gonna do that? Is empty. There we go. We, we want to use is empty. Oh wait, but then I have to convert it back because this is because dot bits converted it to another type, didn't it? Yeah. Can I convert it back? Uh, hmm. I don't know. Well, anyway, uh, I think this is where I'm going to stop for today. Yeah. I'll well, continue this uh, next time, and we'll keep plugging away at uh, this algorithm that I'm trying to implement.